All right, so real quick, we will try to cover um, adding weapons or armor, items, spells, uh, whatever the case, to the Handmaiden's Shop in Dark Souls 3. Um, this is not very heavy on tool requirements, so um, what I use is Param Studio. And uh, I also use Yapt just to import names to it. So let's uh, get a rundown really quick on how Param Studio is going to work. And if you're installing it for the first time, you're going to want to meet these system requirements for some prerequisites for installs. And then in case you have trouble with it, there is a little troubleshooting tab there. Um, this will, of course, be linked as well. So. What we'll do is we will run Param Studio really quickly. Kind of get a lay of the land here. If you haven't run it before, um, it will ask you to start a new project. So what you'll just do is go to File, uh, New Project, and then Project Name, Project Directory. I would make this your mod folder um, because that just streamlines a lot of problems. You don't have to move things around. So there's that, and then the game executable. I'm just going to exit this out though, because I don't need to make a new project, I already have one. <clears throat> You'll want to then navigate down on the left here to the shop lineup params. This will, by default, come blank, and that's what I was talking about yapped for. Um, I have found that I can just import names using yapped. So what you want to do is just make your uh, project save your project because once you save it it will pop up in your mod folder that you can then navigate to with yapped open it up click on it open and then go to edit import names and then save that and then you should be able to reopen param studio and names that do have things uh already th things that have names ready will then populate there are a number of things that don't have names um, these lines right here that don't have names are still items, um, so don't just overwrite them. Be aware of that. Like this one right here is a spell magic weapon. So if you were to paste a new item here uh, by replacing the ID, you would be effectively replacing that and that would be gone. So just make new lines. There are tons of them available between all sorts of uh, ID ranges in here. So the Shrine Handmaid starts at 110,000 it looks like. Um, so then we got a lot of real estate to work with here in terms of the Shrine Handmaid. She goes like all the way up to like 119,000 or something like that. So you should not have any problem with uh, creating rows there for that. And then to create rows you will actually just go find whatever one it is you're wanting to duplicate um, we're gonna be adding armor uh, for the sake of this tutorial or guide I guess um, so I want to add the entire Dragon Slayer set so I have started already by doing the helm and the armor itself um, just to kind of get a feel for it and be able to walk through this a little bit easier with you guys um, so to start off, what we're going to do is we are just going to click on one of these lines and copy it and then repaste it and then we'll make changes to that line and then save it as a, as a new line basically. Uh, in the event that you don't have lines already, a great thing to copy is going to just be the, uh, the chain helm or chain armor or leather gauntlets or leggings. Just copy a pre-existing line from early game that's stuff that's always there like the chain stuff the chain stuff is great for copying and making a new line with so what I'll do um, for the sake of showing this is we will copy the chain leggings and make a new line with those so you'll just click on that control C and then control V to paste again but I'm just gonna make sure I see what lines I'm working with here where I can actually add this in Looks like we have a gap here between our uh, line ending in 61 and then the next one in that is 100. So we've got quite a bit of space there. So we will do 
this line ending in 62 as our new line. So we've copied the chain leggings, we will click Control V, and then we will change these last two digits to be 62, so it will pop up right underneath our Dragon Slayer armor here. To avoid confusion, I'm actually going to go ahead and change this to the Dragon Slayer leggings. So that way I can see that. And I'm actually also going to notate that this is something that I have added to the shop rather than uh, is there by default, just for my own sanity. Um, when you do make changes in here, it is very important to uh, click off of it below it, like right in here, just click because it won't populate the saves here if you don't just click off of it. Um, a few things to notate here before we start moving things around and changing IDs on a few things. Um, right in here you can see the value, material ID, event flags, QWC IDs, quantity, shop type, equip type, all those kinds of things. The important ones to notate here are going to be QWC ID and event flag. Um, if you leave those as negative one by default, it will just appear in the store from the get-go. You don't have to bring any sort of ashes, no sort of criteria has to be met by like boss defeats or area clears or uh, anything like that. That's just default. If you want something to be uh, only attainable after getting a certain set of ashes, you will just find a uh, an item in here that right here we see this one requires the dream chasers ashes we'll click on that we we'll want to copy the qwc id from one of those uh, that requires ashes and then paste that into the qwc id of whatever item it is that you're working on if for some reason you don't want to run yabber and uh, import those names and all that kind of stuff there is actually a page with all of the IDs, what the items are, and all that kind of stuff. So you can still figure out what's what through this. I will link that as well. So one other thing to note here is going to be the equip type. Obviously we're doing armor, so we want the equip type to be armor. Uh, if for some reason you're changing it to weapon or goods or anything like that, you can just right click on this right here and click on whatever is appropriate to it. So we want the Dragon Slayer leggings. So what we'll do is we will go grab the ID for the Dragon Slayer leggings and then come paste it here so it's no longer the chain leggings. I'm gonna cheat a little bit by going into my Dragon Slayer armor, right clicking on that right here and then opening the equip parent protector in new view. Um, this is effectively only skipping me having to scroll to find this. You can do the same thing with your um, chain helm or whatever it is you're working on. So we've got the Dragon Slayer leggings right here. Instead of doing the armor, you can just do this one and do it. It's just gonna, it's gonna open it to whatever this item is. And since I want the Dragon Slayer stuff anyways, I'm just gonna do the one that's already armor. So it gets me there just a little bit quicker. But the point of it is just to get to the armor that you want, so. The leggings are the ones that I want. I'm gonna grab that ID right here. I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm gonna go back over to the line that I'm creating here. And then paste that in there and click off of it. Make sure you click off of it so you see that actually changed there. We'll go back over to the Dragon Slayer leggings really quickly because there's some stuff that you may have to do on this side. Um, if an item is not by default available to be in the shop um, or attainable in the shop in the game or is not regularly sold, it will not pop up in the shop uh, even if you do those steps right there because it does not have a shop price assigned to it. If it doesn't have a shop price assigned to it, it will not pop up at all. So right here on the same page of whatever uh, uh, armor or item it is that you're trying to do, just make sure you take a quick gander at the shop price line right here uh, and assign a price to it if it is negative one for the leggings let's just do uh, let's let's do let's do uh, nine thousand 
why not, right? Just make sure you click off so it saves that. And then that is all you're going to need to do for that right there uh, for adding the items. So you can actually go and right click on this tab right there and close that view and just get back to your shop lineup right here. So we're looking at the leggings. We see that that says leggings right there. We see that that ID has changed. We've changed our, our row name for us to keep track of it a little bit better. And then we're just gonna go up to file, click save. And then we will go ahead and just minimize this. And then I will start up Dark Souls 3 and uh, talk to you guys when I am at the, uh, the shop there. And we'll take a look and see what we're working with. So, okie dokie, here we are with the uh, old lady. I'm just gonna talk to her and get the uh, shop opened up here. Go to all items and we're just gonna scroll down and take a look here. So we have the helm that I've already added, the armor that I already added, and then the leggings that we just walked through together uh, populating in the store now. And they are the 9,000 souls that we assigned. And uh, that is essentially the uh, process for adding armors into that. And then if you want to change kind of the criteria for making them pop up, um, you can just look through some of the other shop uh, lineups and see uh, if there's any IDs that you want. So like say you want one to pop up after a boss getting killed, find whatever item like the dancer armor, find that in the shop lineup, see what that ID is uh, for that event or QWC ID and copy those and play around with moving them into whatever it is you're changing around. But as far as just popping something up, for yourself uh, immediately just to have it available in the shop at any time just keep those negative ones across the board so hopefully that is helpful to some people i know that for some reason i just immensely struggled with figuring that out so uh, hopefully this eases some of the irritation and pain and trying to figure some stuff out from scratch so thanks for hanging out